Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's March 12th. We wanted to have a little conversation about an article on CNN.com. Of course, we know about the greatest generation, baby boomers, Gen X, Y, and Z, millennials. And now here we are. We have arrived at Gen C. And Steph and I were just chatting before the newscast started. We are only just now starting to grapple with the effects of the pandemic on this latest generation of Americans and people all around the world. Yeah, this will probably be for years and years to come. So uh, this article says, the moments when it seemed like all this could be momentary momentary slipped away long ago it's no longer a question of if this pandemic will shape an entire generation but how yeah some experts have started using a new term to talk about the seismic changes changes that could cause ripple effects into children's lives in the far future they've given a new name to the world's newest generation gen c or generation COVID. so here's this expert's uh, definition of gen generation c includes children born from 2016 to the mid 2030s because he says the changes we're witnessing are so dramatic that even kids born years after the pandemic ends will still see it shaping their lives. Absolutely, I agree with that. A senior advisor at the UN Children's Fund said all children should be included, especially those who had points of transition in their lives disrupted. A sociology professor said college students shouldn't be left out. A mental health expert noted children aged seven to nine are particularly vulnerable. And everyone agreed that we need to keep a close eye on what's happening to kids and that children born during the pandemic and living through major developmental milestones right now are an important part of this generation. Yeah, and somebody at UNICEF said, you know, the first thousand days are so critical while countries are focusing on a response to the pandemic. It's important they don't lose sight of these vulnerable time periods in children's lives. They are some very important issues that cannot be set aside. But as we said, the kind of the top of the newscast, this is very much the tip of the iceberg. We're all very aware of how much this has changed schooling and just daily routines for the last calendar year. And the, and the milestones, I mean, for our, our seniors from last year who had to do away with prom and for field just, trips. Just and about every, everything. But a particularly mm -hmm. the younger ones, for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. For now, let's look at today's nine at nine. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says termination papers have been issued for an off-duty deputy after he was arrested. Eric Salora is facing an assault with bodily injury family violence charge. The Public Integrity Unit and BCSO Internal Affairs are investigating. San Antonio police have released surveillance video of a mother and toddler before they disappear. They were last seen January 4th at a store in the 7100 block of Marbach Road. Call 210-207-4093 with any information. In his first primetime address, President Joe Biden outlined his plan for a return to normalcy. The president's address came exactly one year after the declaration of the global coronavirus pandemic. CBS expanding its COVID-19 vaccine allocation here in Texas. The company adding 74 additional pharmacies offering the vaccine to those eligible for a total of 180 pharmacies across Texas. A man who said he has a very negative impression of Derek Chauvin became the sixth juror for the former Minneapolis police officer's trial in George Floyd's death. The man told attorneys he could set that view aside and consider the evidence in the case. Boeing 737 MAX jets back up in the air for Southwest Airlines. The planes return to service with 44 daily flights to 15 U.S. destinations for now. But by mid-April, Southwest says the jet will resume operations throughout its entire network. Last month's winter storm killed nearly 4 million fish on the Texas coast. Officials of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department are calling this the largest fish kill event since the 1980s. Netflix is cracking down on password sharing. Some users are being blocked at the login screen, being told they need to be in the same house as the account owner. Netflix says the new security measure is only being tested on some users right now. Kit Kat released a key lime pie flavored candy bar. Instead of milk chocolate, this one will feature key lime pie flavored cream. It's coming out nationally in the spring for a limited time. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Here's a footnote to our Generation C or Generation COVID conversation. There, you know that song, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. 
There's a viral version on TikTok and they changed the words. The words are now if you're in a if you're a pandemic baby <laughs> and you've been in quarantine your whole life, so you get overstimulated by everything because all the strangers you see have masks on and you've never really had a play date in your life. <laughs> clap your hands. Aww. And that's gone so viral. It's been viewed over 130,000 yeah. times on TikTok. Yeah, a very different childhood. It's I a different say. kind of reckoning for for our children these days. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look outside with live cam today. Uh, 71 degrees, uh, expecting some rain rain, if you will, later. Yeah, we're still waiting. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 been, it feels like a long journey now, these humid, uh, breezy days. We're, we're waiting for the payoff, and I think we'll eventually get some showers and storms Saturday night into Sunday morning. That'll be our window where we could actually get some accumulating rainfall. Right now, though, Still just humid and mostly cloudy. 71 at the airport. Southeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. The dew point is even higher now. It's in the mid 60s. So extremely sticky. We'll be up around 80, 81 this afternoon. No surprise, right? That's where we've been last couple of days. Uh, let's look at the uh, the radar. It's not there, but we do have a couple showers uh, here and there, mainly north of San Antonio. 67 Comfort, 64 right now, Bernie State, 72 in New Braunfels, 70 at Stinson and Randolph. And the pollen count is in. Do want to alert you of this. Molds jumped up today. It's in the high category, 1350 Hackberry and Mulberry, both in the moderate levels. No oak, though. Good to see that oak is staying out for now. Looks like the freeze kind of set back the season a little bit. Humid, uh, sh a few showers tomorrow, 79 on your Saturday. Sunday looks like the better day out of the two. We'll get some clearing skies. 75 degrees on your Sunday. Guys. Not too bad. Thank you, Justin. Uh, taking a look at a trans guide, uh, Samuel King was following this all morning long. You can see that uh, 18 wheeler still overturned that I 10 at the Y. So still working on that scene and still causing some major backups there. It's been there for many, many hours now as the offloading and clearing continues. The other big one we've been following a big rig caught fire in East Bear County after police say the driver crashed right into the median and construction zone at I 10 East at Foster Road. The accident caused long delays on I 10 this morning on the east side as crews cleared that scene. Now, police tell us it happened around 415 this morning. They say the driver was unable to see the road because it was too dark. After the crash, the cab of the big rig caught fire, but the driver was able to get out safely. Officers tell us the cab appeared to have been fully melted. Hazmat crews were called after fuel from the tank gas tank spilled as of now or at last check only one eastbound lane was open police say another vehicle crashed at the scene and police are still investigating police are also investigating a motorcycle accident officers say the motorcyclist was hospitalized after he crashed on a north side street happened around 145 in the 800 block of bitters just east of blanco road Police have yet to release details of the crash, but they say the motorcyclist laid his bike down while riding on bitters. Police tell us the man was unresponsive and was taken to University Hospital. Officers say they believe his injuries are not life threatening. To the pandemic, local health officials are reporting 366 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. They also report that five more people have died from the virus. Mayor Ron Nierberg says the seven day moving average is now at 186 cases per day. 240 people remain in the hospital with COVID-19 and starting on Monday, anyone in phase 1C will be able to get a vaccine in Texas. An alert for you, a community health fair is happening tomorrow. Tomorrow on these sites, hosted by Reverend James Robinson and Gospel Vision Ministries. The health fair Saturday from 10 to 1. It's located next to Chapman's Chicken on W.W. White near Rigsby. At the fair, you can get free COVID tests, speak directly to health experts, and get a new supply of safety items like uh, gloves and masks and sanitizer. Last night on the Night Beat, our crews made a mistake and told you the event was happening today, but it is tomorrow. That is March 13th, again from 10 to 1. Like we're starting all over again, but this time it's for real. The Spurs hit the court again tonight, but with this time with fans in the stands. Very nice. RJ Marcus is live at the AT&T Center with more on what fans can expect tonight. Good morning.
Yeah, good morning, guys. And we are really excited because it has been, it's hard to believe that it has been a year since this has been a packed house at the AT&T Center. But the Spurs SSC has worked really hard to get things ready for fans to return tonight as the Spurs hit the court, taking on the Orlando Magic. So joining me now is Chuck Carreau. He's the in arena host. We all know him. We all love him. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck's been with us. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of the safety health protocol procedures. Also, look at this guy right here. The Coyotes here as well. Look, fans are back. Yeah, definitely. Very nice. Um, it's going to be a family fiesta night. We got the fiesta jerseys, fiesta courts. Just, just talk about everything that's going to be going on I here. Tell you what, well, happy, happy Spurs Day. Been waiting a year to say that. So happy to have fans back at the AT&T Center. You notice we've got our fiesta court behind you with those fiesta colors, something that our fans have been asking for. It's turquoise. It's fuchsia. It's teal. Bada boom. You're going to love it. Uh, but let's, let, let's get a little serious here. Let's talk a little bit about safety. The safety is the, uh, our fans and our players and staff is of the utmost importance, even of this guy right here. So we're going to make sure that everyone, when they come in, they wear their masks. You can get the clear app, <laughs> stay that social distance, get the clear app on your phone to kind of do the, the COVID screening. We have sanitized all the surfaces. There's even a state-of-the-art filtration system here so you can feel really safe coming in here and enjoying. Uh, yes, and it's cashless, so no cash. <laughs> Everything's going to be done through the Spurs app. So if you haven't downloaded that Spurs app, download the Spurs app, download the Clear app, you'll be good to go. Now that that's all out of the way, we're going to have fun here tonight at the yeah, AT&T yeah. Center. First and foremost, there will be messages from our players to say thank you and a message from R.C. Buford, personalized message to everyone who comes here, just thanking everyone for their patience and re reiterating the Spurs commitment. Uh, we're gonna give you a t-shirt. Look yeah, at this, talking about those about three beautiful Fiesta colors right there. It says family, because that's what we are. We are Spurs family. We're not just gonna give you one. Oh no, we're giving you two of them. You're going to get two of these. We know not everyone can come to this game here, so you get one for coming to the game, and then you can give one to a friend because we are all family, right? You, here you go. Here you go, brother. All right, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> uh, lot, lots of fun stuff. Obviously, the Coyote here, the 2020 mascot of the year. He is back for his 20-something year. He's got a few things up his sleeves. Yes, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to ask him what he's been doing over the last 365 days, and I'm sure he's been up to some very interesting yeah, things. Yeah, I'm sure some uh, some coyote hijinks or some coyote craziness. Also, you guys are going to have uh, different gifts for fans is what I read, and also um, Allie Brook. San Antonio native is going to be performing the national anthem. Yeah, San Antonio native from known for Fifth Our Harmony and now her solo career, Allie Brooks. She's lovely. I met her once before she was when she was here. She is going to do the honor of doing the national anthem. Now, we'll, we'll save that for Allie Brooks a little bit later. <laughs> Again, Coyote's here and the hype squad is here. We're just going to bring the family together because together we are Spurs family. Awesome. We can't wait for tonight. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Chuck. And of course, the Coyote getting ready for tip off here at the AT&T Center as family. Fans come back in a limited capacity, and we have all this information that Chuck just went over on our website, ksat.com. Remember to download those apps before you get here, and remember to just have a great time as the Spurs are back in front of their fans, the family here at the AT&T Center. Guys? What is How Coyote funny. doing to Chuck's head? I know. What did he put on his head? <laughs> I didn't see that. They're asking, what's the Coyote doing to your head there? <laughs> he, I think he was putting hair, pulling hair off of his head and putting it on mine. I don't know. Well, it's just it, going to jump off and fall on my ear or something like that. I don't know. I'm just sharing, I guess. <laughs> How cute. Yeah. Yeah. All about. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Thank <laughs> you. It, we're, we're all excited about game day and having uh, folks and fans back yeah. inside the arena. Thank you, RJ, Chuck, and Coyote. Yes, all of you guys. And then the cool stuff that the fans get tonight as well. Yeah, and we're again digging those Fiesta colors. Yeah, love it. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. You can now kayak on the San Antonio Riverwalk all year long. Still ahead what you'll need to do before your next kayak excursion. Bring a fishing pole? Mm. Question mark? <laughs> Plus, it's spring break for many families in the area. David Sears live at Legoland to show us what you can expect if you plan on making a trip there this week or weekend. The popular app TikTok, mostly used for entertainment, but it also serves as an educational platform. After the break, how one local woman is using the social media app to bring awareness to an HIV diagnosis.
15 to 60 second videos serve as a window into people's lives on TikTok. We were just chatting about it. There are diverse communities that make up the platform, and one San Antonio woman is using her account to show users it's possible to live a healthy life with HIV. Our Alicia Beretta met up with a mom of three who says she's inspired to share her story due to a lack of HIV education in our community and across the world. For Janely Saucedo Castrejana, living with HIV means taking a pill every day and going to her doctor every six months. HIV isn't necessarily a personality trait at all. She also shares her story, struggles, and joys on TikTok, where more than 28,000 people follow her for new content related to HIV. I put it out there for my whole life out there. I'm an open book. Um, I feel like there's power in sharing experiences. Mm -hmm. Makeup looks inspired by her HIV medications, information on pregnancy and delivery with the virus. They will determine your viral load, and then if your viral load is low, then they'll go ahead and have you push the baby out as normal. And what being undetectable means. Basically, anyone who's undetectable, who's living with HIV, uh, cannot transmit the virus to anyone. Or what she advocates for. Her journey with HIV began more than 10 years ago when she met the love of her life and now father of her three children that are all HIV negative. She started dating and he told me at, at the front that he was HIV positive and so that obviously meant um, our relationship dynamic was going to have to be a little different. Although careful during intimacy, her life changed forever. A few months after that, I got the diagnosis of being HIV positive, and it was very difficult for us at first. I think most people assumed that I would just be okay with contracting it, and that wasn't the case. We had made a plan to be a mixed status couple, and it didn't work out that way. Hey, I'm getting ready for work and I'm already late, so let's hurry up. And yes, half my face is painted because I got to wear a mask and I'm not about to waste foundation. Anyway, here we go. Janelle wants to remind others they have hope and purpose even after an HIV positive diagnosis. What our message really wants to be is it doesn't matter how someone contracts HIV, it shouldn't matter. Everyone um, merits care, really good quality care, respect, and a life being stigma free. And Janelle is aware that she has such a big platform on TikTok. She has thousands of followers, and one of her videos has been viewed more than a million times. And one of the biggest misconceptions that Janelle works to debunk is how this virus is transmitted. So it's not by hugging or sharing a meal or anything like that. And what makes her the happiest is knowing that people care because each time that she posts, there's people engaging, commenting, and asking questions. Mark Steph, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Well, I'm wondering, Justin Horn, if this uh, next little cool down is winter's last gasp here in South Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hope so. Yes. I mean, that's the way I feel personally anyway. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't think that this next front's actually going to bring all that much cold air. We're looking down the line. There may be a couple more fronts, but nothing that jumps off the page. So there's some good news here if you're not a fan of the cold weather. But I want to show you some temperature extremes across the country. First, so we'll start in Zapata. That's where I got up to 94 yesterday, just south of us, south of Laredo there. That was the hottest temperature in the country. The coldest number this morning, Half Moon, Wyoming, negative 16. Had to look that one up. Didn't know that existed. But 110 degree temperature difference from the low to high. And we're going to be back in the heat again today here in Texas, just based on the weather pattern here. Our low is out to the west. We've still got good southwesterly flow aloft and then good flow off the Gulf of Mexico at the surface. All of that combines to bring us some Pretty warm weather here in Texas and very humid weather too. dew points are in the mid 60s, close to 70 along the coast. So the humidity is firmly entrenched here across South Texas and really now much of Texas, uh, with the exception being the uh, Texas Panhandle there. Uh, dew point tracker shows that uh, we'll have high dew points through tomorrow and then it drops off. We get our front through here. It looks like after midnight Saturday and it will be extremely dry on Sunday, dry and windy. So we'll have to watch for the uh, fire concern there, but it will feel much better outside. Dew points will start to climb again as we get into Tuesday, and then that will bring another slight chance for some thunderstorms. Looking at the live radar, we did have a couple showers earlier trying to work through San Antonio and South Texas, but these are quickly going away, so not much out there right now. We could see a stray shower today, but just like the last couple days, anything we'll see will be very, very light. 71 degrees at the airport, cloudy, southeasterly winds at 13. You see the cloud cover. There are some breaks, though, and any breaks that we have just helps to boost temperatures. And we're already starting to see numbers climb into the 70s. 71 at the airport, 70 Randolph, 73 New Braunfels, 73 Carrizo Springs with a little bit of sun there. 
More clouds out in Del Rio, where it's 73. Wind gusts have been pretty consistent here. We've been saying this last couple days, gusting to 25 miles per hour. Today will be no different. It will be a breezy day, but if you're tired of the wind, we'll get rid of that too on Sunday. We'll have gusts today through Saturday, probably 25 to 30 miles per hour. When our front comes through Saturday night, winds will pick up quite a bit. But by Sunday noontime, I think the winds are really starting to calm some. And Sunday afternoon should be much less windy. So here's our forecast. As we get into Saturday, we'll fast forward to Saturday here. Saturday, 7 o'clock, we start to see a line of storms developing out in West Texas. These will work their way southeast. Some of these storms will work their way into Rock Springs and Del Rio. That's where we could see a couple strong storms initially. But I think these storms probably fall apart a little bit, and we're looking at probably just some showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder as this line works its way towards San Antonio. That would be pre-dawn on Sunday. That will continue to work east. We should get rid of the showers by mid morning on Sunday and then some clearing skies by the afternoon. And as I mentioned, Sunday afternoon looks pretty good. There is a marginal risk of some severe weather Saturday evening. Rock Springs, Brackettville, Del Rio, Lakey. We'll keep a close eye on it. And as far as rainfall goes, I'd say about a quarter of an inch in general for most of us with these uh, showers and storms that will be moving through. Forecast for today up around 81, mostly cloudy. South southeasterly winds 10 to 20. We'll go 79 tomorrow and then a 60% chance of rain Saturday night into Sunday. Don't forget we spring forward. That's 2 a.m. Sunday morning and we clear out Sunday afternoon, 82 Monday, 84 Tuesday. Another chance for some storms Tuesday night into Wednesday as well, guys. We've been trying to remind people all week about the time change. Yeah, but at least it'll be nice Sunday afternoon, I guess. It Lose an be. hour and get some nice weather. That's right. <laughs> Thank and, you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. 922. Let's go ahead and check in with LD at Legoland. Hey, Mark and Steph, this is Lego Dave coming to you live from downtown San Antonio. You know, we've had a great time this week going to all these really fun places for you and your family. I'm going to finish right here at Legoland Discovery Center where you can build stuff, really tall stuff. Look how tall that building is. It's all Legos, and we'll tell you how to do that and do it safely. Come it up live from downtown Lego like Dave. Mr. Bill. <laughs> it's spring break for many families around SA and if you're trying to get the family out of the house Legoland is a great option. Not only is it educational it's also fun for kids and parents. Our David Sears is live at Legoland and explains some of the safety measures in place right now. Where did Lego Dave go? He's roaming around the city looking for some more fun. So he's, he's in there. So we might catch up with him in, in a few minutes. But, but first, we have caught up with Chase Hathaway with Legoland. And of course, one of the things we're all concerned about, I think we were here last year, just about the time Absolutely. the pandemic hit. Yep. And one of the things we're obviously concerned about, especially when you got such a hands-on uh, place like this where, where kids want to get, get their hands on all the stuff, what are you doing to protect the kids? Absolutely. We have so many brutastic safety procedures in place First of all, masks are required the entire time to uh, come in and throughout the entire duration of your stay. Masks are required. Uh, outside of that, we have also kept capacities limited. We have not raised them at all, and so okay. we still have very limited capacities, enabling for social distancing. That six feet that uh, this past year we've kind of grown to like know and love, you're still going to get that social distance here. Uh, outside of that, the really neat thing is every Lego brick that you touch in here is cleaned specifically for you. And so as you come in, you're going to get your own personal bag of Lego bricks that has just been cleaned. Once you're through like, with those, if you need new bricks, different color bricks, changing bricks, our staff swaps out those bricks, cleans them, and the next brick that you touch is going to be fresh and clean just for, for you. All right, Chase, I'm going to ask you to step back one, one, one two, or two steps. Mark and Steph, I want you to look at this. This is the college basketball men's and women's brackets. And yes, they're all Legos. Talk about this, how long it took to build, and how many Legos are actually in these. Absolutely. So everything you're seeing in here is built out of Lego. This is the world's largest Lego brackets in celebration of the women's tournament being hosted here in San Antonio. Uh, uh, it took over 55 hours for our master model builder, who you are going to talk to like next, I think, uh, to uh, construct by hand, brick by brick. He uh, designed it and installed them on, on the egg wall here. As you can see, they're currently empty because... Oh, 
Selection Sunday for the men's is coming up. Selection Monday for the women's is coming up this weekend. Uh, and we are going to install all of the team names on here brick by brick uh, awesome. and complete it throughout the next awesome. couple of weeks. And these aren't big bricks either. These are like the twos and the fours and the sixes. So there's some, there's some pretty detailed bricks in this thing. I'm looking for Texas Tech. It'll be on there. It's going to be on there. Uh, before too long. All right, Chase, we'll be back <laughs> in, the next, uh, in the next half hour. We're going to talk to the master builder, see what, uh, see what we can create. For you guys. Is it me or did he uh, humor David with a chuckle there Who? about tech? Oh, that was me. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was me laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. And kayaking excursions along the San Antonio River Walk will be open for spring break and throughout the year. Reservations are required and are $60 for two hours. You still need to make a reservation if you choose to launch your own kayak, but that will cost you only $15. We have more information right now on our website at kset.com. Again, I know a bunch of guys who've been kayaking for years. They've done some great destinations all over our great state, but they said this is a pretty cool adventure on its own. Yeah, it's got a great following. I was just telling Mark that I see them and Saturday morning right by the Tobin Center. Out there on your runs. I want to do it. I want to do it. I'll, sure. I'll keep you posted. It's just about 930. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, the Royals received a lot of attention after their interview with Oprah, but the internet says there was another star of the show. Still ahead, the question many people were asking after the interview and its connection to the Brady Bunch. Well, um, I hate it. <laughs> but <sighs> My belly hurts real quick. I think I ate all those Oreos that would. It's about to get noisy for the first time in a year. Fans will be in the house as the Spurs host the Orlando Magic tonight. RJ Marcus is live at the AT&T Center with more on what fans can expect. Hey, good morning again. Yeah, good morning, guys. Of course, the Spurs, Spurs Sports and Entertainment, really excited to get fans back, even at a limited capacity here inside the building, because as you guys mentioned, it is, it's hard to believe it's been a full year since the Spurs had a packed house here last year before, of course, the pandemic started. So, of course, all sorts of different safety and health protocols are now in place here at the AT&T Center for fans. And for people coming out here, just wanted to let you know that you have to download the Clear app. So I have that right there on my phone. And you also have to download download the Spurs app. So what that's going to do is that it's going to let you take a health screening. You're going to get temperature checked when you walk into the building and the Spurs app is going to be used to make all your food or drink purchases. There's also kiosks here in the in the arena now that are going to also kind of help uh, with the touch list and basically the cashless experience here at the AT&T Center. So once we get past all that, there's going to be a lot of fun here because this is considered a welcome back night, a welcome home night for for fans and of course the Spurs family. So first thing is we're gonna get these pretty cool t-shirts here. Stephanie, I know you're a big fan of the Fiesta colors. It is gonna be a Fiesta themed night. The team Yay! is gonna wear their Fiesta themed uniforms. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and they're also going to have the Fiesta Court is going to be here in the arena as well. So there's going to be a lot of fun here. There's going to be a lot of different things for fans. The Spurs hype squad. We saw earlier the Coyote was already getting warmed up. So the Coyote is ready to go for tonight as uh, fans come back to the building. And so it's just going to be a lot of fun here. I wanted to show you guys real quick because there may be questions about how they're going to social distance also like in the arena. So there's actually zip ties here around the seats see right there around the seats that will not be able to be used tonight. So they have certain seats zip tied off right there as Robert is showing you guys. So people are not really going to be able to move around. So just make sure you kind of stay in your area. Of course, this is all going to be socially distanced. It's all going to be safe as the Spurs hit the court to take on the Orlando Magic tonight. Mark and Stephanie. Very cool. Some things I didn't even think about. And, you know, another thing is like I realized how much I miss the coyote. And yeah, love the shirt, RJ. <laughs> Yeah, the coyote, uh, he's a lot of fun, even at, uh, you know, in these early morning hours. I can't wait to see what he has uh, planned for fans tonight. So it's going to be a lot of fun here. San Antonio native Ali Brook going to be singing the national anthem. So it's going to be a, a good time here for fans. And I know the guys are going to be amped up about having a live crowd to play for tonight, too. R.J. Marquez, live at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Thank you, R.J. Thanks, R.J. Taking a look outside with live cam. Ah, humid 72 degrees, but pretty mild, but we are expecting rain finally, right? Finally, finally. It feels like we've been waiting a week for the rain, but it, it will be here. We'll get some decent rainfall totals hopefully out of it. 
In the meantime, just a couple sprinkly showers out there. The radar shows us a couple showers working north of San Antonio. This is for the most part really, really light. Other than that, that's just ground clutter you're seeing there around San Antonio. So we're not looking for any rain right now. And in fact, the sun is starting to pop out. We're up to 71 degrees here in town. It's warm across the entire state with the exception being Amarillo. And they're sitting at 50. But if you're doing some traveling today across the state, looks pretty good. A little windy out in West Texas. Uh, maybe a bit more cloud coverage to get up towards Dallas. But most of Texas will jump up into the 70s and 80s today. Good spring break weather until that storm system uh, arrives. And that will bring us some rain Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, here's a look at the forecast for today. 80 degrees by 2 o'clock, up around 81. Southeasterly winds will stay gusty. We'll talk about those storm chances over the weekend coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Well, last week during Katie Science Lab, we got to learn about the different phases of the moon with Oreo cookies. And my daughter Rooney was already learning about the phases of the moon in school. So when she saw the experiment and the Oreos, of course, she wanted to try it out. So let's take a look at how it went. Hi Katie, I saw your video. Can't wait to do the faces of the moon. You know what the best part is? I get to eat Oreos! Oreos, 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 uh, 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 Oreos. I love Oreos. I think I ate some. Sorry. Did I eat some? Yes, I did. I shouldn't have. But don't worry, we have enough to make the faces of the moon. So I want to do a new moon right now. I got it so hard to balance. Ugh. Come off, little white stuff. A new moon is you can't see it, so it looks dark just like that. This is a waning gibbous, and this is a third quarter. Mm. Wait, I want to look this too. Mm mm. This is good. This is the first quarter. No, that was good. This one looks like full moon, but I only gobble it. Mm. 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 Like that's not enough. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Whoa. Um. I hate it. <laughs> oh. So this is a waning crescent, but except it's the other way around. So these are the faces of the moon. Katie, that was a fun experience doing the faces of the moon. I can't wait to do another experience next time. Thank you. <sighs> My belly hurts real quick. I think I ate all the Oreos that would. Oh, Rooney. <laughs> She ate a lot she, of Oreos. You guys had a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> yeah, we did. So she watched, you know, with yeah. uh, Katie and David. So if you saw it last week, Katie started off with a plastic knife. Mm -hmm. And then David came in and did this number. Right. right. And then Rudy's like, oh, I'm oh, all over I'm that. Oh, I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we prepared <sighs> for it, she had Oreos before. She was like, hey, can I have a few before we, I'm like, sure. sure. But then with that and then, right. you know, during. And so that was like, that so was, that awesome. was dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, she's like, my stomach hurts. <laughs> hey, we want to see your kids trying out Katie's science lab experiments like Rooney did. Uh, record a video, take pictures of them doing any of the experiments, then go to ksat.com, search for Katie's science Science Lab. The bottom of the article is see a portal where you can upload those videos and pictures, and we might show them right here on GMSA at 9. But Rooney has set the bar pretty high. Just go a little higher. A lot of Oreo eating there. I yeah. All right. Looks fun, right? <laughs> it was. If you do thin mints, ne oh, never mind. Oh. 940 right now, 72 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And pop star Justin Bieber releasing a new pair of Crocs when the shoes are expected to hit store shelves. That's still ahead. What the heck? This animation is getting to work out today. Yeah, it is. Last half hour, David explained the safety measures in place down at Legoland, and now he's introducing us to the master model builder at Legoland. That's right. David's had a lot of fun all morning. How's it going now? Kevin Hentz joins us now. He's the master model builder. That town in there, he had a big hand in building that town. He built the uh, brackets for the men's and women's NCAA. Real quick before we get to Kevin, this is what Chase was talking about. You get this bag when you come in. And these are all yours for while you're here. And then they take that and they clean every one of those up before they get it to the next 
child that comes in. So completely safe. You know, I have my Lego microphone. It's working really well. And Kevin, first off, unbelievable stuff that you can put together with Legos. Talk about uh, how you became a master model builder. Yeah, so I had to win a building competition to get my job. It was a two-day-long building competition right here in San Antonio. We had over 100 contestants from all over the country. And so it was a, kind of a big deal. And what do, you, what do you do here at Legoland other than just kind of build some stuff? Do you help some kids learn how to build and create? Yeah, so uh, I teach uh, Lego classes daily, uh, me and my assistants. Uh, so you can come in and learn. It's included with your tickets. Uh, learn how to build a, a cool Lego model. Right now we're doing mosaics. Kind of like what you're doing right there with the, your little Spurs jersey. So you, you teach kids, and this is, can, can get pretty intricate. So it can, yeah. When you, when, you, when you start working with the kids, do you have like age levels for certain things, or do you just kind of let them and their imaginations run wild? Uh, yeah, uh, so our classes are kind of recommended for ages 5 and up just because of the, the type of the Lego pieces, but uh, we have kids of all ages come in, and we can always find something for everyone to, to get put together. And we're, we're doing this mosaic. Steph, I'm building this one for you. Um, just one, hang, on, hang on one second. Keep talking, Kevin. Just talk about anything. Yeah, so uh, just want to mention uh, I'm, I'm if, on my if anyone here. wants to come visit us here, we're located in the shops at River Center Mall. You, you can uh, get your tickets online ahead of time, uh, which is always a good idea to ensure that you uh, have a spot in, in line to be able Perfect. to come in. So the website is San Antonio com. You can find our opening times, get your tickets, uh, and class times and stuff on there, too. All right. In honor of the Spurs bringing back 3,200 fans tonight and it being Fan Fiesta night. Yeah. And the Spurs are going to wear the front. I didn't get the, all the black on the bottom, but there you go. Oh, oh that nice. looks so nice. How about that, huh? And, and it's Fiesta good, themed. Huh? Yeah, great job, man. Yeah, it's that great looking uni. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's stuff. awesome. So that is so cool. Those Spurs go from. Legoland Discovery Center. Well, great job, David. And thanks for being at all these great spots around yes. town during the spring break, break week. Yes, you've inspired all of us to oh, do new things. <laughs> Thank you. Take the chat. Yeah. Right now it's 946. <laughs> Justin standing by with a look at uh, maybe a, a weekend forecast for if folks have decided to wait to the last minute to go down to the coast. Yeah, yeah there's still some time, although I'll caution you, Sunday looks a little wet down there. So mm -hmm. if you're going to head to the coast, I would say probably Saturday is your better day. It's, it's going to be humid and somewhat cloudy, but Sunday we're expecting showers most of the day down there. So just a heads up. Here's what the forecast looks like. Temperatures will be in the 70s. Uh, water temperatures right around 70. But the rip currents are high. They've had some alerts down there for rip currents, so be careful there. Wave height four to five feet, and then chance of rain on Sunday, 70%. So Saturday's probably the better day for uh, a visit to the beach. Uh, time lapse this morning. We had cloudy skies, a couple showers moved through, and then the clouds are already starting to break up. We're already seeing some sun. This has been the trend last couple days, and it's allowed our temperatures to jump up into the 80s. 71 right now. Dew point is at 64. That number still extremely high with southeasterly winds at 13. And the radar still giving us a quiet picture here. We had a couple of light returns up there in Blanco County earlier, but that's it. Uh, we're not expecting any significant rain today or really tomorrow, not until tomorrow night, does the radar probably become far more active. 69 degrees right now in Comfort, 72 in Hondo, 75 down there in Pleasanton, 73 in New Braunfels, 74 Gonzales, 74 Kennedy. So it's warm and humid uh, all across the area. Dew points stay high into tomorrow. Then they just basically fall off a ledge here as we get into Sunday. Sunday will be far less humid. Winds will start to calm a little bit during the afternoon. So I really think Sunday afternoon is going to be pretty nice. And then dew points jump back up by Tuesday. We'll have another chance for some thunderstorms Tuesday night. Wind gusts right now anywhere from 20, 25. We're seeing some gusts uh, maybe a little bit higher than that out towards uh, Hondo. But it's going to be another breezy day. Those good southeasterly winds staying in place. And these are the wind gusts forecast here over the next few days. So today we'll continue to see gusts 25 to 30. Saturday, gusty winds, especially when our front comes through. And I think that's probably after midnight. We'll see some strong winds. But as we get into the day on Sunday afternoon, I think winds will finally start to calm some and we'll see less in the way of of wind and again some drier air. Visible satellite picture shows we got a lot of clouds coming into Texas, some rain up there across parts of Kansas. And you can pick out our upper level low. You can actually see the spin there, some snow associated with this. And as we talked about yesterday, this upper level low is going to put 
down two to four feet feet of snow up across parts of Colorado, but it's also going to produce some severe weather for parts of Texas and Oklahoma. So as we get into tomorrow afternoon, or actually tomorrow evening, this is around 7 o'clock, we'll start to see a line of storms develop out in West Texas. That'll work its way east and southeast. Now, as it comes into San Antonio, this thing's probably starting to fall apart a little bit. I think we're probably just looking at some showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder here in town. But a couple stronger storms will be possible out west initially when that line starts to move in. And then by 6 a.m. Sunday, rain is starting to come to an end, and then it pushes east. We get clearing by midday. Sunday afternoon, it'll be actually pretty nice. And uh, as we look at the severe weather risk, this area in green here, marginal risk, it's low end, but places like Rock Springs, Lakey, Del Rio, Brackettville, that's where we could see a strong storm or two tomorrow evening. As far as rainfall goes, about a quarter of an inch. That's uh, about as much as we can expect out of this. It's not going to be a huge rainmaker for us. 81 degrees today, mostly cloudy. And the extended forecast, 79 tomorrow, 60% chance of rain Saturday night into Sunday. Clearing Sunday, 75. 82 Monday and another chance for some storms, some spring-like storms, Tuesday night into Wednesday. We'll be right back. And Justin Bieber is out with a new Crocs and Socks collaboration. It features a Crocs classic clog with tall white socks from Bieber's clothing line. The worldwide launch is on March 16th on select Crocs e-commerce channels in the U.S., Europe, and Asia. How did a child star from the Brady Bunch get mixed up in the Prince Harry and Meghan interview with Oprah Winfrey? As millions of viewers watched Oprah's exclusive interview, people began asking themselves, where can I get those patio chairs? CNN's Jeannie Mose explains the Brady Bunch connection. This is a story with legs, not to mention cushions and even wicker. Who needs a throne when you've got those patio chairs? Viewers were ogling. How can I get those patio chairs? <laughs> Currently out of stock, sold out everywhere from overstock to Amazon. Priced at $554 a pair. But what's priceless is their connection to this. That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch. The man who owns the company behind the chairs that cradled the behinds of Prince Harry and Meghan and Oprah is none other than Peter Brady. Then it's time to change. Over 50 years later, he goes by his real name, Christopher Knight, Home Collections. I love it. On his Facebook page, Christopher noted, I am honored to have the patio chairs from my collection become the seat of the most fascinating, famous sit-down in recent history, while most folks were digesting... It's a go. <laughs> ...various bombshells dropped in the interview. So much to unpack there. Others just wanted to unpack those chairs. The real winner of the Oprah interview, the chairs, even a similar, cheaper version was sold out on Walmart's website. Usually it's clothing, like Megan's $4,700 Armani dress that gets all the attention. The dress, with its lotus symbol representing rebirth, also got parodied for representing a seagull bombshell. Before we get into it. <laughs> But the patio chairs escaped unbesmirched. Genimos, CNN. The Brady Bunch. New York. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, 73 right now. We'll be up around 81 this afternoon. Chance of storm Saturday night into Sunday morning. Clearing Sunday afternoon. Uh, for more on the brand, it's ChristopherKnightBrands.com. Everybody have an awesome weekend. <laughs> have a great weekend, guys. Bye. <laughs>